There is a major breakthrough headed to American consumers. It's the iPhone. A lot of hype, a lot of buzz about this particular device. The iPhone itself is a revolutionary product. We are calling it iPhone. Apple's first iPhone was launched on June 29, 2007, and iPhone played a big part in removing Nokia from the position of being the best mobile phone manufacturer in the world according to customer demands. When Nokia couldn't bring innovation to its products, Apple did a good job of bringing new solutions and creating better visions for consumers. Apple did so well in grabbing consumers from the initial stage that the company made iPhone launch in all the major markets possible by the year 2009. Steve Jobs always rallied on consumer demands and he always saw potential in existing demand for products. When Steve Jobs saw an opportunity in the market for Apple's music player iPod, he assured me that the iPhone's design is influenced by its design of it. There was a high rate of consumer demand among regular Americans for iPods. Steve Jobs saw this as an opportunity and used it to design the iPhone. Apple saw potential in mobile phones being a common medium for playing music. But there was also a drawback to this idea. It is a natural phenomenon of economics that people always look for more utility at less price. When people will get the features of an iPod in their regular mobile phones, the demand for iPods will decrease. But still, it was an opportunity for Apple to include the features of the iPod in their mobile phones and try to bring in a revolution. But Apple did not have any experience in producing mobile phones. So, the company thought of collaborating with Motorola for manufacturing mobile phones. But the plan was not taken into action. As soon as Apple entered the mobile phone production market, two things were clear. There is a huge gap in the satisfaction level of users of the current mobile phone companies. The supreme mobile phone manufacturing companies like Nokia or Motorola were still focusing on the communication features of mobiles and not much focused on the user experience. On the other hand, Apple was already an established company that focused more on user experience. The Apple Mac after its first launch on the 24th of January 1984 and the iPod launched on October 23, 2001 were a little bit higher priced than other similar products from different companies. But they were high in demand for one reason. The reason was very simple. Great user experience. The user experience of Apple's Mac and iPod gave these two products a higher level of a market advantage than the competitors. From the features of its two best-selling products, Apple came up with an idea of a phone that met customer satisfaction demand as the priority. Apple management focused heavily on user experience while designing the iPhone, which had features of both the iPod and Mac. The company focused was so determined to get the best product for the customers that they shifted the product development assignment from wireless network engineers to the Department of Consumer Goods. The idea was risky but dynamic. Apple management thought that wireless network engineers will first prioritize the network and communication segment, which is a basic feature of any good mobile phone. But the consumer goods department's priority is to create the best value for the customers. The management of Apple also required the consumer goods department to focus on more exciting products. The biggest mistake made by Nokia's management was its slower understanding of change. When the world was changing dramatically and Samsung and Apple had chosen to make a new era of mobile phones, Nokia was still struck with the older ideas that its senior leadership developed over the years. Apple made the iPhone symbolic of modern Western culture and made it more personalized. iPhone was mainly developed for people who want more from their mobile phones. The extraordinary touchscreen idea was mainly developed for the tablet computer, the iPad. iPad was first launched on April 3rd on 2010. Apple dominated the market for tablets too, which gave them a boost in understanding the market dynamics better. 
The existing tablet providers in the market were offering fancy stylus pens, buttons, etc. in their tablets. While the other companies were offering exciting products that were lucrative, Apple tried to make tablets exciting with a very simple user interface. This idea has helped Apple to get better than its competitors in the tablet market. The company since then has focused on two basic ideas while making iPhones every year. The company has highly focused on innovation to make the products more exciting and then again, making the user experience as simple as possible so that users can have a comfortable experience. There is a common saying that you can use an iPhone after using an Android phone, but you can never go back to Android after using iPhone. Though it just shows the love of iPhone users for the branding and the product, it also shows how Apple has dramatically changed the mobile phone market forever. Apple has played the role of the revolutionary figure who changes the game. The internal communication system at Apple has helped the company to get better designs and ideas for the development of the iPhone. Having different products like a tablet, iPod, MacBook, and MacBook Pro in the market had already created a large group of loyal consumers for the company. In the development of the iPhone and its marketing, Apple used a dynamic marketing idea that is currently used by many entrepreneurs and multifunctional corporations in the world. The question here is, what was the idea? The idea was develop consumer base before developing value. The value here means the products or services offered by a marketer. A loophole in modern consumer behavior is that people believe more in the product of a company they already know about. Marketers before developed products and marketed their products to the customers. Many companies nowadays initially develop a consumer base who might have a relevant interest in their future products or services. Then they go for marketing their products. Apple used this strategy to develop and market iPhone. They used their existing market setup based on the current products. After that, they found out the best features of these products that were most appreciated by the consumers. Then Apple invented iPhone. As the features of the iPhone were already known to and appreciated by regular consumers, iPhone was a great addition to the mobile manufacturing industry. Also, the loyal consumer base of Apple rated iPhone highly which helped the growth of mobile from its initial days. In 2007, the company sold 1.39 million iPhones and by the year 2008, the number of iPhones sold around the world was 11.63 million iPhones. Within the next 10 years, the company took over the global market gradually. In 2015, 231.22 million iPhones were sold globally which is one of the largest successes of a mobile manufacturing company to date. On the other hand, Nokia saw one of the lowest sales in its history in 2015. While in 2007, Apple was far from Nokia in mobile phone sales margin. By the year 2015, everything changed like magic. Apple's higher level of appreciation for innovation and consumer satisfaction made it one of the best mobile manufacturing companies in the world and threw Nokia out of the game. Another lesson that can be learned from the game Apple played is the level of interaction between internal stakeholders of the organization. Apple employees connected and cooperated with each other because of the development of the iPhone. The iPhone took a large number of its features from other Apple products like MacBook, tablet, iPod, etc. For this reason, it was obvious to interconnect between departments for better development. Where Apple created a jolly culture for product development, Nokia created a culture of bureaucratic management. The interaction between different departments not only helped Apple to create a better culture, but innovation was also boosted by these initiatives. The features developed for MacBooks could be re-modified and used in iPhones if possible. Also, the developed features for the iPhone were usable for other products. This not only helped in developing new products, but also helped the company to achieve milestones. Steve Jobs advocated himself as the cross-fertilizer who was responsible for the idea of combining products and ideas. Apple focused on two things while designing its products. These two things are simplicity and intuitiveness. 
One common thing in the mobile phones manufactured in the successful era of Nokia was the feature of opening mobile phones in parts. But the iPhone couldn't be opened. The reason for doing so was Steve Jobs' love for simplicity and beauty. This idea worked well and customers found it to be a unique but classy feature of the iPhone. Another thing that changed the situation for iPhone was, plastic was commonly used by other mobile manufacturers like Nokia as the screen of the mobile. But Apple focused on beauty and user experience more. They selected glass as the screen of the iPhones. Focusing on these small details made out a unique, user-friendly, and customer-oriented product, the iPhone. Apple didn't only focus on the consumer goods department and technology department for the rise of the iPhone. They played a big game of economics that everyone forgets to notice. There is always a good portion of customers who will go for luxurious products. Luxurious product consumption is always on a constant level and people from all over the world have attraction to luxury. The marketing team of Apple targeted the luxury-oriented audience from all over the world and made them believe that mobile phones are not only a means of communication in the current world. If you look at the rich and semi-rich people around you, you will see the impacts of Apple's luxury marketing. Everyone who has a good social background and good money spends takes iPhone as a part of their social status. iPhone's luxury marketing has paid off so well that a large number of Apple consumers just buy iPhones to give proof of their wealth to society. When Nokia was focusing on networking and how to improve networking, Apple changed people's perspectives regarding mobile phones. The next thing that amazed mobile phone users and attracted them for buying an iPhone was Apple's music service iTunes. The question here is how a music service payroll in destroying other mobile manufacturers. By the time Apple launched iTunes, the music industry was transforming. It was becoming more and more online oriented which Steve Jobs didn't forget. iTunes was a service of selling music online and playing it on an iPod. The same service was added to the Apple iPhones. It was a great addition for music lovers who wanted more from their mobile phones. The next big thing for Apple iPhone was the App Store. Just like Android users use the Play Store to get access to whatever application they want, Apple has its App Store. Though Steve Jobs was not ready to have a system where external parties could provide apps, still the executive team won the debate. The App Store is managed by Apple and independent suppliers provide applications in the platform for Apple users. This strategy of software production by independent developers worked greatly both for Android and Apple. Some business analysts say that the App Store has revolutionized the market of mobile phones. With the facility of multiple software and touch screens, app developers around the globe understood this opportunity to be very lucrative. So, they rushed and started developing dynamic apps for the App Store which resulted in success for Apple. While Nokia was only ringing phones focusing on the communication factor, Apple made mobile phones multi-dimensional and a part of people's lifestyles. By developing a multi-dimensional mobile phone, Apple started to already threaten the other competitors in the market. In this way, Apple had thrown away the then-market leader Nokia from the position of having the largest market share. While in 2007, the company sold 1.39 million sets of iPhones around the world. In 2008, only one year, the sales rose to 11.63 million worldwide. This was more than a growth of 700%. By the year 2009, the company doubled its sales to 20 million and in 2010 the sales were 39 million which doubled again compared to the previous year. The rapid growth of Apple has been so vast that, in 2015, only nine years of its launch, the company sold 231.22 million iPhones around the world. This rapid level of growth has made Apple one of the largest companies on the planet, not only in terms of selling mobile phones, but also compared to all other companies in the world. The way Apple has raised its market share over the years, Nokia has faced the opposite. 
This case study is a perfect example of how innovation has become the leading factor of success in the current world and how the world itself is becoming a technology-driven place, where companies without innovation will not survive.